Hello and welcome to Rock and Roll to Success. Today I have the honor of bringing the man, Justin Results French, one of the best marketers out there. He knows everything about marketing. And Justin, thank you so much for coming, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Gabriel. Good to be here with you. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on your your video podcast here. I really love what you're doing and um, definitely appreciate the invite to, you know, share a bit with your community and love what you're building. And yeah, just happy to be here. So thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming, man. And as I was seeing the answers you gave to the form that I usually send out, I really love them because I asked like, what were you obsessed with as a kid? And your answer was winning. And then the second question was like, how you you can't stand people that are incompetent. So where do you think these things came from? And how do you think growing up and later on these things affected you in your life? Yeah, so thanks for the question, Gabriel. And yeah, like growing up early on, I was a big, I was very athletic. Like, I just love to compete, right, in sports. Wow. So soccer, you know, or, or football, known to the other parts of the world. Um, baseball, uh, you know, I was a runner as well. I did cross country and track. And, uh, yeah, like, I didn't play football, but, uh, like, the American football. But, you know, mm -hmm. I did other sports like golf and, you know, just, you know, was r really into, you know, snowboarding skiing bodyboarding i was a big you know bodyboarding guy I, I just love the beach you know i live five minutes from the beach so it was just natural for me to to be obsessed with that and i just loved competing on teams and you know i just i, I hated to lose right but i loved to win and so i did whatever i could you know because these are team sports usually um so i did whatever i had to do to contribute to the team to make sure um you know, we were, we were winning and, you know, I just developed like, I, I want to say like leadership qualities, like early on, um, for whatever, you know, reason, probably, you know, influence from like my grandparents or, you know, my parents maybe. Um, but I just, you know, kind of became like a natural leader, um, and just saw that I could influence and inspire other people. And so that, that was, that was a big thing for me, um, because I, I always put a lot of heart into everything I do, right? That's one thing you'll notice about me is I'm very heart centered, right? So if I'm going to commit to something, right. And I'm all about committing first, right? So people talk about motivation or what inspires you or passion. Those are all great. But for me, like I'm all about commitment first, right? Like I am committed to winning this game. And I have this do whatever it takes attitude that I am going to make it happen, right? And that's just the, the 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 qualities that I possess for whatever reason. It's in my DNA. You know, my grandpa was an entrepreneur. Um, so maybe I get a lot of that spirit from him. And, um, but yeah, I just, I, I love sports. I love athletics. I love to win. And, um, and then that translated into business, right? Because... You know, I even out of high school, I, I got the Entrepreneur Society uh, scholarship in high school. Then I got a four thousand dollars scholarship to go to a local community college, four thousand dollars. And so I, I, I won that. I, I submitted a business plan and I, you know, pitched the group, pitched the team and they awarded me the, the scholarship money. So I took that awesome. and, and ran with it. Yeah. So I've just always been very entrepreneurial. Right. And so translating my sports, my athleticism, my leadership qualities there about winning and doing whatever it takes to win and uh, having that attitude of, of, hey, we're winners here, guys. Like, And I'm always, I'm an eternal optimist, right? The glass is always half full with me, right? No matter the situation, right? It can be the worst situation, but I'm always going to see the positive in, in every situation. It's great to see how sports have shaped you and you're right. And you really learn a lot of qualities like leadership and teamwork through sports, especially I didn't know you liked soccer so much. And it's like, I love soccer obviously because I'm from Brazil, but 
yeah, it's so inspiring to know. I didn't know that you had this scholarship and and how was it when you like when you dis you discovered there was this possibility of the scholarship and doing the business plan still as a teenager? Um, how did you go through it? Did you ask your grandpa for help because he was an entrepreneur, as he said? How was it at that time? Yeah, thanks for the question. And yeah, I'm a big Brazil fan myself, you know, Neymar and some big names there. And so, yeah, definitely, um, yeah, lo love the team there. So um, how it transitioned and how I got that scholarship was, you know, it was a high school program and, you know, it was, you know, like 90 or 100 and something students were competing for it. And I just, you know, I guess really shined in their eyes with my my business plan, my uh, my presentation, and you know they just awarded me the the scholarship, which was great. Um, and so, but it really, it's really going back to all those prep years where, you know, I was a perfect example of when I was like fourteen or fifteen, like. I was an entrepreneur. I got all the clients. I got all the neighbors in my neighborhood where I grew up as clients. I did all their yard work, right? Like I, I, I was like, Hey, you know, like I'm going to go, you know, cut grass. I'm going to go do landscaping. I'm going to pull weeds because, you know, these people need it. Right. And so just very entrepreneurial, like at an early age, right? Like I, I liked the biggest thing for me is being in control. Right. Like <laughs> I like to have control over my lifestyle. I don't like to have things up to chance where like, you know, and I unfortunately got laid off at the last four companies I worked at over the last 14 years. Wow. Right. So I, I, I've, I've worked in corporate. I've done my own thing. I've done both. I've had multiple businesses. I've had a lot of failures, but I will say that even when I worked in corporate, I never closed down my company. I always had my company. I always had clients for my marketing business. And so, you know, but it's all those businesses that I built even at a young age, right? Where it's the fundamentals don't change, right? It's you're, you're, you're getting customers and you're keeping them happy. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and whether it's like you're selling a product or you're selling a service, like these fundamentals mm -hmm. don't change. And so it doesn't matter what business you have. It, it, it really, it's multidisciplined and multifaceted where you just focus on those fundamentals and you can win, right? Just getting customers, keeping them happy, happy, and you have a business, right? And I'm even uh, repositioning my own personal brand to more of a sales and marketing mastery focus because mm -hmm. before I was just, hey, the marketing guy, right? Where now, as you know, I'm a new chief marketing officer at LaunchCart now, and I can talk about that later, but I've, I've really transitioned my personal brand uh, to more of a sales and marketing mastery because here's what I realized. A lot of companies that I work with, they can have like a thousand leads, right? But if they can't convert those leads, you, you don't have a business, mm -hmm. right? So, so I, and I'm actually the top seller at LaunchCart, right? Like I've, I brought in a lot of money and, and even though I'm the CMO, right? Like I got to be able to sell what we're marketing. Right. Because and and how I think of sales and marketing at its basic level, just to share an analogy, is marketing is getting the horse to water. And sales is getting the horse to drink water. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it's very basic. Right. And so that's one thing about me is I pride myself on marketing and sales simplified. Right. Because there's a lot of people out there that talk and they make things very complicated. But I, I really streamline and, and get to the point, right? It's like, guys, here's what we need to do. And it's usually two to three things that can really make massive impact. It, it's really only two to three critical success factors that if you focus on in your business, you you, you will see success in, in 90 days or less. That's what I pride my, my approach and my methodologies on. So that was a really long-winded answer, but I, I think you get where I'm going is that it's not just you know, that prep for that presentation for that scholarship in a matter of a few months, it's really all the prep work I had done in previous years of being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to just serve 
add value and make some money along the way. <laughs> and, and that, that, that's, that's really my, my approach to everything is, and I'm all about like you, multiple streams of income, right? So unfortunately, when I got laid off that fourth time, the biggest mistakes that I made in this course of 14 years, and I'll tell you what they were, and this is a big teaching moment for everyone listening, is never stop building your personal brand online. So never stop like posting on LinkedIn or X or social media or you know making content. So never stop creating content for your personal brand online and never stop building your personal email list. Okay, those are the two biggest mistakes that I made over the course of 14 years. Um, and my first business was actually an IT business right out of high school. And I actually made a million dollars in five years, but wow. I only netted 50 grand. Yeah, I wow. only netted 50 grand. Why? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because I, I didn't anticipate this thing called profitability and, and watching your expenses, right? So we had an office mm -hmm. space. We had you know, employees, consultants, software costs, like all these additional costs, right? Like you wouldn't, you would think, and, and so it taught me a very important lesson about profit and profitability, right? And so, but I accomplished great things. Like my goal, like when I, I, I knew I was going to be, I knew I was going to be a millionaire, Gabriel. Like I, I, I already t committed. I told myself up here, like mm -hmm. I will be a millionaire by so age 30. Right. I will be a millionaire by age 30. Like that was that was my path. I was on that mission and I was working 50, 60 hours a week and I was going to school too, Gabriel. So I was bootstrapping my way through business school, running this company with 10 people. I had 300 clients. I made a million dollars in five years. I only netted 50 grand. And so I had to reevaluate. And then economic conditions, 80 percent of my clients were mortgage and real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I lost 80% of my clients, like literally in a year or two because of the mortgage crisis in 2008, 2007. So it made me pivot from an IT consulting business to a marketing agency, right? So I pivoted, right? So I didn't know digital marketing that much back from like 2000 to 2007, right? I didn't know much about digital marketing, right? But I knew websites. I knew technology. And I knew that there was a trend happening with social media. I was like, Hey, you know what? Businesses are going to need help with this. Right. I, I saw the light go off. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Wayne Gretzky, you know, the famous, um, uh, hockey player, like people ask him, why were you so good? And he said, cause he anticipated where the puck was going to be. Right. That's why he was so good. So same thing with business trends, right? You got to really be able to analyze and look at trends and study trends. And that's why, like I was doing social media marketing back in 2008, 2009, helping businesses. I was teaching at local colleges, a workshop on social media. This was 2008, 2009, like we're in 2024 now, right? So I've been doing this a long time. And, um, and so my main, my main point is you got to make sure you're anticipating where the trends are going in the market and be able to pivot as an entrepreneur because I was going down with a sinking ship in my IT business. And so I was like, you know what? And uniquely, I went to my top clients in my IT business and I said, hey, you guys have websites. How's it working for you? And they said, not good, Justin. And I was like, all right, let me get back to you. So in three months, I went and taught myself and got obsessed with digital marketing, internet marketing for three months. I was up till four in the morning. I just went... 110% for 90 days, mm -hmm. I went back to those clients and I said, hey, mm -hmm. I have a solution. Give me 90 days. Mm -hmm. Let me show you some results. And all those clients, the, those three or four clients of my IT business became my mm -hmm. first marketing agency clients. And that's how I transitioned out of that. So Wow, that was a, an amazing answer in so many levels. I think you brought so many lessons in this answer about how we, not only were you, you were successful in your business in the sense that you got the, those revenue goals, but at the same time, you discovered that maybe profitability wise, there were some lessons that you could learn 
And then being able to pivot at a crucial moment like the financial crisis of 2007, 2008. And a question that I was thinking about, how do you know the right time to pivot? Because sometimes we ask ourselves, well, maybe I should just grind it out. Maybe I'll see the light at the end of the tunnel if I keep going at it. But sometimes it's better to just pivot and try something else. So how do you think? For people that are starting out, because many people right now are thinking if they should start their personal business, their personal brand, they either they don't like their nine to five or they want some side hustle and to get some extra money. So to someone that's thinking of starting out, how do you think that they could know when to pivot, if they should pivot and other lessons to people starting out? Yeah, that's a great question. So two parts to that. The first part is I really identified that, you know, studying market conditions of, you know, what was happening with the IT market and the service-based business, I just knew things were, were changing. And I knew that the internet marketing, the internet marketing or internet millionaire lifestyle was like very attractive to mm -hmm. me back then. I was like, like, this would be great to work on my laptop and make money online, right? Like that whole, you know, uh, movement back then was very attractive to me. And, and, and so I kind of went in full force uh, because of the lifestyle that it can create for, for myself. And that's what I wanted. And I aspired to that. Um, and so I went all in. But one thing I'll share as a takeaway tip for everyone is... If you think that it's going to only take like, you know, three months, six months, nine months, you'll want to double or even triple because that's exactly how much time it's really going to take, right? So we have this misconception that, and, and I'm guilty of this too, right? I like to move fast. I like to mm -hmm. move quick and I'm very impatient, right? And so um, I've learned, especially having a daughter now, like I got to be much more patient um, and so... It's a marathon, it's okay. not a sprint. But I would say the reason why you do need to have a side hustle these days is because you never know when you can get laid off at a corporate job like me, right? Because yes, you know, our parents' generation, like, you know, baby boomers, that job security existed and you could work at a company for 30 years, you know, get retirement and, and, and go on your way, right? Well, that's very rare these days right like there's a huge there's a massive amounts of layoffs going on in in the u.s and I'm, I'm sure other countries as well and so you need to be aware of these economic factors and i think being self-reliant now is really going to be the next trend so yeah like and and even when i you know worked in corporate I, I had my own business because clients needed help, right? They needed help with marketing. They needed trusted marketing advice and, you know, they're willing to pay for it, right? So, um, uh, and trust is a big thing. Trust trust is like the biggest thing, trust and integrity. Like that's one thing about me. Like I, I put everything out there because I have no fear, right? Like I don't have anything to hide. And so um, my track record speaks for itself, right? So before clients work with me, I tell them, look, do your due diligence, like go to my site, you know, watch my videos, read my LinkedIn testimonials, just educate yourself and, and just make sure it's the right decision before we start working together. Because, you know, like I, I put everything out there for a reason. Like I want people to say, hey, you know what? Wow. Like. I want those types of results for my business, so I better hire Justin, you know? So, um, but yeah, and then the, the, the other thing I'll say is I, I read a book that really influenced me, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert mm -hmm. Kiyosaki, right? When I was like 18, a friend of mine gave me that book. I'm sure you've read it, right? Yeah. And and a lot of light bulbs go off. It's like, oh, wow, okay, so the the four quadrants, right? You know, employee, investor, business owner, uh, self-employed right and so uh it i i just needed to step into that and become more of like an investor thinker uh at times 
uh, versus just like that employee mindset, mm -hmm. right? And so my, my dad, he's like employee mindset all the time, right? Me, I'm an entrepreneur mindset. Like we're completely two different two different mindsets, right? Like we, we, we still have debates to this day. Like, you know, I'm 43, <laughs> right? So like for the last, you know, 20 some years, he's still getting on me about, you know, why aren't you at that corporate job, you know, again? And I was like, dad, I got laid off for the fourth time in 14 years. That's the reality. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, you're going to find that company. I know it. And I'm like, I'm creating my own destiny, <laughs> right? Like that's my, like, I, I feel like, entrepreneurs they're really the long shots at the horse races right like they're the long shots you know and and if they have enough heart and all the environmental factors are in their benefit they can win you know but it's the numbers are stacked against them right but but that's what drives me like i i, I like that process i like that feeling of look i gotta prove myself like i'm gonna make it and I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to make it, right? And I've already made a million dollars once, so I can definitely do it again. And mm -hmm. the only difference is the compaction of time, right? So we're, we're all going to make a million dollars in our lifetime, Gabriel. But the question is, do you want to do that in a year? Or do you want to do that in five years? Or you want to do it in 20, right? And, and that's up for us to decide individually. And that's why I'm all about the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Right. So I'm all about creating those uh, multiple streams of income. And, you know, I've been on this kick, you know, since early on. And I was really set up for success, but I had the lowest point in my life in 2008, 2009, Gabriel, where, you know, I pretty much lost everything. I'll, I'll be honest. I had investment properties. I lost that. You know, I lost all my retirement. Right. I, I lost everything. I was down to literally like my last dollar. And I put in a CD in my car that my mom gave me. It was called The 25 Secrets of Wealth Creation by Kevin Trudeau. I put that CD on in my car and things started clicking. I made a pact with God and I said, hey, look, I've been doing things my way. So now I'm just going to give up control to you and you kind of take the steering wheel and just guide me. And sure enough, within like a few weeks, I got an interview at a job. Uh, for Peak Potentials Training, which is T. Harv Eker, uh, author of the book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And it's a personal development company, you know, very similar to Tony Robbins. And so I got an interview at this company in San Diego, and I went in with a PowerPoint presentation. And I said, hey, marketing director, this is my presentation. This is how I can bring value to Peak Potentials. This is my track record. This is what I've done for businesses. And they're like, you're hired, like you're hired. And so I got the job as a digital marketing specialist. And, um, because my agency, like I had clients, I was making five, 10 grand a month. Then they would, you know, get sold or someone would leave. And it was just like mm -hmm. this, right? Like five, 10 grand a month. Then it's like zero. And it's like, oh, five, 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month. Then it's like zero, zero. So it was like that fluctuation. It was like, man, I. I'd lost everything. I was starting over and I graduated college <laughs> top of the business program at Cal State San Marcos. Right. So it was a big transitionary phase. One of the you know few hardest years of my life of having to start over at 28. And fortunately, I was able to work on myself at this company while I did marketing for them. I was mm -hmm. able to work on myself personally and reset. Right. I went to all the workshops. I went to all the business, you know, teaching classes, you know, financial freedom workshops, business coaching. Like I did it all uh, because I worked in that environment. And that was really needed at that time for me to really, you know, hit that reset button and rebuild. Right. Because I was at my lowest. So but since then, like, you know, since I put my faith in God and, and hit that reset button and worked on myself personally and, and professionally, you know, I've been able to, you know, come back from that experience, uh, you know, and, and, and I believe it really builds that thicker skin, right? That alligator mm -hmm. skin and that resilience, you know, moments like that really, really build you and, and test you for a reason. And, and it's every setback is really your set up for your next breakthrough. So break down to break through, right? And that's that transition phase that we always go through. Yeah, this is a wonderful story, Justin. And 
kind of reminds me of the hero arc in a superhero story that he needs to go down to the worst time possible so that he can rise back up again. And the fact that you had to put it in the hands of God or to let go of the outcome and just stop trying to control everything because that's something that we as people with this entrepreneurial type of mind kind of always have to to work with because we're always trying to solve problems and trying to be in control of things and sometimes we just need to let go and let things happen for themselves and it's funny because it was exactly the next question that I was going to ask you about was how you started working with T.R. Becker at Peak and and it was funny that you brought up that story without me even having to ask you. But anyways, what do you think that was the, the most important lesson or the most important lessons that you learned when you were working with them? And how did this change your outlook on life and in other parts of your life apart of, from business and other things as well? Yeah, so I'd say... One of the biggest things it taught me working for T. Harvecker at Peak Potentials was the digging deeper into yourself and really tapping into and stepping into that greatness and really mastery, right? Because there, there's a quote that Malcolm Gladwell's book, The 10,000 Hour Rule, right? Which basically states mm -hmm. for mastery, you need 10,000 hours. Right for, and I have over thirty thousand hours in marketing. Wow. So, so yeah. So, and one thing working with him and and that environment was the the people that coached me, right? Like Harv, Alex Mendozi, and a lot of other people. They really helped bring in bring out that greatness in myself that I might might not have seen or been able to tap into unless I had some people telling me not what I wanted to hear, but what I needed to hear and really help elevate my game. Right. So, and, and if you look at any famous athlete as well, it's like for them to reach that level of greatness, right. They really had good coaches. Mm -hmm. And so the lesson here is surrounding yourself in an environment where it's not just great coaches, but it's a great environment. That's very empowering. And it's really going to help elevate your game by having you dig deep and you know they're not the most comfortable conversations right they're not the most comfortable conversations but you know as you know it's it's when we're stepping outside of our comfort zone that's when the biggest growth can happen and so that that's my testament too in this situation was i was able to work on myself personally professionally able to get some great results he gave me a great video testimonial that i cherish today on my site where he's, you know, giving a test to, uh, testament to my social media marketing skills, right? My, so, um, but yeah, it was a, a great experience. You know, the company got sold, right? And then they kept me on as a contractor for a little bit. Um, but then the company got sold. And so then I was on to my next, uh, position. So, um, but since then I've worked at, a uh, a hair care products company where I helped them grow like eight different brands online. I ran all their digital marketing. I worked at a billion dollar credit union. So really helped them drive, you know, their digital marketing efforts and rant, manage their agency and all that stuff. Really got some great results. I set up marketing automation for them that didn't exist prior to my arrival. They had zero marketing automation. You know, before I got there, they were send, they were having one team member spend four to six hours a day sending emails manually. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it took me six months, but I was able to do it. And so by the time I left, because I got another position, I got, you know, another position. By the time I left, I had fully automated their daily emails. And so I was saving them not only time and money, but, you know, really streamline their processes. And so that's one gift that I have with my technology background. And this is where I really have the skill sets that, you know, a lot of marketing people, they might be very marketing savvy, but they might not be very technical savvy. Mm -hmm. So I have both. 
right? So I'm able to bridge the gap between technical and non-technical people. I'd say that's one of my superpowers, right? Because I can tech, I can talk the tech speak, right? But I can also talk the business speak and I can help break things down and bridge that gap. That, that's been a real big gift of mine. Um, now I'm not a programmer, right, per se, but I can talk to the programmers in their language and translate it into business outcomes and business objectives that we need to hit and how are we going to do that? And so, um, you know, I, I was Cisco certified network administrator in my IT business. I was Microsoft certified. And then in my marketing path, I've been, you know, uh, I'm a Salesforce certified, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not a hard, that's not an easy certification to get. But I helped lead a transformation from Zoho CRM to Salesforce CRM at my last startup from the marketing ops. And so what usually would have should have taken like a year, we did it in six months. So, yeah, then I went and got the certification because I've been in the trenches of eating, sleeping and drinking Salesforce and marketing automation for months. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I might as well go get this certification. And I passed it the first time. Right. So. Um, but yeah, so getting back to peak potentials, it was a good uh, uh, thing for my life. And so, yeah, a, a good transition. And what are some of your secrets when you come in and do your 90-day plans to start getting results? Do you aim for some quick wins in the beginning and then have the the bigger goals that you're going to strive for? What, what are your... Like some of your go-tos to start the process. Yeah, my go -to, my go-tos for the ninety day pre uh ninety day program basically. Yeah, so my framework it's really starting with an assessment of where where they're at, and I really want to meet them where they're at, right? So a lot of companies try to sell you software, or they try to sell you, hey, we're a marketing agency, you know, we're gonna do this, but I like to start with assessing where they're currently at, right, and really analyzing that at all dimensions, looking at their website. How big is your email database? And it's really like I put on my detective hat, right? Like my my doctor hat and I diagnose and I have to get a full overview of, okay, what does their social media look like? What does their SEO look like? What are their metrics look like, right? A data-driven marketer, that's what I am. I look at the data first and then I can craft a plan, a blueprint. I call it a... A, a, a GPS guidance, if you will, or a roadmap of, okay, here's based on my assessment, looking at all your data, your current marketing tech stack, all the software tools that you have, all the people that you have on the team, mm -hmm. looking at all of that, and, and, and they've answered my questions, and then I develop a personalized profitable marketing system roadmap for them that will give them return on investment in 90 days or less. Yeah. And it's been, I've used it at every single company, like literally within like, it doesn't matter if I'm working at a company or not, like whether it's a, a, a full-time company that I'm working at, or it's a customer, a client, mm -hmm. I use the same approach and I've used this templates hundreds of times and the framework always works because it's that pathway to profitability with this plan and companies don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. Right. And, and the mistakes a lot of marketing people make is they start with tactics, right? They, oh, we'll, we'll just do Facebook ads or we're just going to do LinkedIn ads or, Hey, we'll just do a content strategy and post every day for organic. Okay. Well, let's take a step back for a second and let's ask some questions like who is your target audience? Mm -hmm. What What is your business objective? Right. What's your current revenue? How's your current? What are you currently doing for marketing? How's that working? What's your budget? Do you have a marketing plan? Right. Like these are the types of questions I ask initially, because then it helps me assess things and provide that more uh, personalized, profitable marketing system that I've that I've created. And is this what you call the perfect integrating integration marketing system? Correct. Yes. Yes. And, and it's taken me years to hone it, but yeah, it's, it's mine. Like I've developed it. It's my framework. It's my methodology that I use at, at any, any company 
and I'm actually going to either start licensing it or selling it or, you know, putting into a digital product with AI because it never fails, right? It never fails. And yeah, it's worked wonders. And I also have, I really teach this principle called the seven C's to social business success, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, people buy from people, right? So, um, but the seven C's briefly is just community, context, communications, content creation, consistency, conversion. So starting with your community first, you got to identify where they are online, right? Whether they're on X, maybe they're on LinkedIn, maybe they're on YouTube, right? So where, where is that community online? That's number one. The context to that community, right? What is your context to that community? Are they, are they avid soccer uh, football fans? Right? Are, do, do they have a passion for Brazilian soccer? You know? So what is that context mm -hmm. of that community? And then that brings us to the third C, communications. Right? Because everything at the end of the day is communications. And then content creation. Right? So you have to create content, whether it's video, audio, uh, posts on X or LinkedIn. Right? Getting out that content. And then that brings us to that consistency. Consistency, this is where a lot of people fail, right? At the gym or at their uh, organic posting schedule. Like they got to post every day. Like I posted every day for six months. So I tell people, look, if you want to go the organic route and you don't have budget for paid ads, then you got to post every single day for 90 days on, on your, and start with one or two platforms, right? Like people, oh, you got to do like five platforms. No, like for the first 90 days, focus on one to two platforms only and take it from there. And then that last thing is, last C is conversion, right? So, and a conversion metric can mean different things, right? A conversion metric could be, did they opt in for your email newsletter? Or did they buy your product? Or did they submit a lead form or an interest form? Or did they call that phone number? Right. So what does that conversion metric look like for your business? So those seven mm -hmm. C's. So, so with my, my two main like digital products I'm creating and I've already created, um, I'm, I'm starting to implement AI around this, but so my, my framework of my, my roadmap is one flagship product. And then the other one is the seven C's framework. So those are my two mm -hmm. frameworks. And so those have worked tremendously for every single client and every single business that I've worked at. And as just an example, one company I worked at the first two weeks, I went in and I, I can put on my consulting hat, right? Very quickly, right? Like I'm, I'm very multifaceted. So I can put on my, my uh, consultant hat. I can put on my SEO hat. I can put on my social media hat. I can put on my email marketing hat, whatever hat I want to put on, I can put it on. <laughs> right. And so I can speak the language because I've done it all. And so, um, and to a certain extent, like I can even get into WordPress and, and do what I need to do. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, marketing automation, whatever it is, like, I'll just put on that hat. Um, and then, yeah, like it's, it's just worked really well for, so getting back to my, I went into the company within two weeks, I had an entire roadmap mapped out. I'm like, okay, here's our 90 day plan. And she was like blown away. She's like, like you came up with this in two weeks. Like what you just been here two weeks, Justin, like, how do you know all this about our business? And I was like, well, very easily. Like I just put on my consultant hat <laughs> and, um, I, I identified all the pain points, all the process challenges and areas for improvement and made recommendations. And I gave their entire like, you know, roadmap, right? And so, you know, when you're in a corporate environment, that can be somewhat threatening if you hand that to a boss, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, and then the, the, the other thing I'll say is, yeah, once you have a proven... Uh, framework that works like you just stick to it right so um so i'm continuously building you know that you utilizing some ai and i i will say this because this is really important too so we all have in my opinion 
we have these alter egos or personas that we tap into, right? Mm -hmm. And so my alter ego or persona is what I've called and coined the phrase, the marketing Ronin. And so if you're familiar, I'm, I'm infatuated with Japanese and, and Chinese martial arts movies and, and that culture, right? And that warrior culture. And um, like growing up, I used to always love watching like Bruce Lee movies and Jet Li yeah. and, you know, all the martial art. Like, I love that. And even like subtitles, like I don't even want it in English. Like I want, I want the subtitles, right? Mm -hmm. Like I want to hear. So as I transitioned in my marketing path, this marketing Ronin kind of happened on a recent trip. Like I was in Vegas a couple years ago and I was meeting with a, uh, a life coach and she's like, Justin, your persona, you're like the marketing Ronin. And I was like, Whoa, that is, that is deep. Like, I love that. And so I've just kind of rolled with that. So that's my, my alter ego is like the marketing Ronin where I can tap into this persona at will and it's like when I'm in warrior mode, right? Like wh when I get into warrior mode, like, and I, like, I want to beat your business from a marketing <laughs> standpoint. And I've identified with my SWOT analysis, your weaknesses. And, you know, the, there's the book called The Art of War, right? By Sun Tzu. Mm -hmm. And there's The Art of Business. Like those are my two favorite books. And, and there's a lot of wisdom there. And so the marketing Ronin, and the reason why it's the Ronin and not the Samurai, here's a big distinction, right? So the mark, the Samurai has a master. The Ronin does not have a master. That's why I'm the marketing Ronin as my persona, because I do not like having a master, right? I'm, I'm the master of my own destiny, right? And so, yeah, hopefully that, <laughs> hopefully that, uh, that adds some wisdom there for everyone. Two great books to read, Art of War and Art of Business. Like they, they've been my go-tos. So, you know, deception and, you know, showing strength when you're really weak and vice versa. There's a lot mm -hmm. of things to unpack there. Uh, it's a very powerful book, two books. And so, yeah, hopefully, you know, if you're following me on X, guys, you'll see some of my imagery that I'm creating with AI lately with the marketing Ronin. And, um, yeah, it's just a brand that I've created and I'll do more with it, but it's, it's, a, it's another passion project of mine, just like my be real X talks and the model X, another passion project. So <laughs> the entrepreneurial, uh, you know, journey of too many projects. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I, I always try to narrow it down to like two to three projects max, mm -hmm. get those systemized generating revenue and then go to the next one. <laughs> so I'm getting better. But thanks for the question, Gabriel. Good. I love how you bring this intensity from sports into business. And I think that's something that's very unique to you that you can always hone in that energy, that raw energy of competitiveness, of wanting to win, of wanting to beat your competitor, be it in a game like sports, be it in business, that in many ways is also kind of like a game. And you were talking about AI before and how you can use it. But at the same time, we were talking about authenticity and how people buy from other people. So how do you see this in this age of AI that so many people want to do everything with AI? They want to do copywriting with AI. They want to do AI videos, AI voiceovers. How do you see the not only the power, but also the potential and how we could best leverage AI nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. I love that question. Before I answer that, I want to ans answer a previous question that we had talked about earlier about um, m one of the questions you said that I answered that was, I have an impatience for incompetent people. <laughs> so yeah, let me touch on that real quick because this, this is a good one. So I'm sure you have this same sentiment, Gabriel, that in, in my experience, um, and I've done the numbers and I've worked with people, a lot of people over the years, really only two out of 10 people are really a players, mm -hmm. right? So it's the 80, 20 rule, right? Pareto's principle that applies to everything, including people. Um, and so I expect a lot out of myself and I put myself at a high standard that I expect other people 
to put their self at at a high standard and that that doesn't always happen because you can get let down so yeah. i have a real problem with dealing with incompetent people especially like when it comes to like customer service right like where you're on the phone or with your you're on the phone with tech support for example i did a lot of this in my it business where it was like you're dealing with incompetent people very frequently uh-huh. and so it really weighs on you and even to this day right um, but, but my pro tip for everyone out there in how to, if, if you're like me, you're challenged when you're dealing with incompetent people, it's hard to navigate. It's very hard to navigate. I kind of give people like three chances, right? I give people three chances, right? So if, if you're, if, if it's three strikes and you're out, right? So if you mm-hmm. can't pull your weight, if you can't level up, you got three chances, then I'm sorry, like, you know. So same with customer service people, right? I'll give them like three chances. Then it's like, you know what? I got to talk to your boss. And they're like, why? Well, honestly, I'm just not getting what I need to get right here from this conversation with you. And so, yeah, so I I really try to fast track things and just try to deal with competent people. And that's one cheat code I've picked up on. The other cheat code is everything is negotiable. Everything in life is negotiable. That's another pro tip there. So now let's shift gears to the to the to, to the AI talk. So I, I speak on this pretty frequently in like some some spaces that I'm in. Um, and shout out to the OCC one click creator community uh, that Christelle uh, put mm-hmm. on and founded. Like I'm a, I'm a part of that community, so it's a good group of of some founders mm-hmm. there. And so we talk a lot about AI and. I, I, I simplify it, you know, because this is marketing simplified, right? I simplify it by t- very, very two basic things. Like, how is this saving me money? And how is it making me money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not rocket science, right? And so if I can use the AI as a tool to get more done in less time, it's a no-brainer, right? And so for me personally as a CMO, as the subject matter expert on AI for the team, I've been really able to uh, become 60% more productive in my job because I didn't, I don't need a team of six anymore. I really only need a team of like two or three, Mm -hmm. right? So not only is it saving me money, but it's helping me make more money because I'm more productive. It's cutting costs and I'm able to do more in less time. And so those fundamentals don't change across the board. It's business 101. Now, how you, to your other point, is how do you maintain that human element when it comes to business and how do you stand out and differentiate yourself when it comes to AI? And that's where relationships are critical. That's where authenticity is critical and emotional connections, right? Because AI is not emotional, right? We teach it to be emotional, but at the end of the day, uh, I, th- I think where we're going to differentiate ourselves when it comes to AI is the relationship capital that we have, the emotional connections that we have. And yes, it can help us, you know, save money. It can help us make more money. But I think, and this is where when it comes to marketing technology is very similar to like AI technology is I see a lot of companies, they invest in software. And the analogy I use is, they're driving that Ferrari in first gear. Like they can't get out of first gear, right? Like, like they, they don't know how to, you know, oh, unless they have like an expert subject matter expert that can help them. Okay, this is how we go to first gear, second, third. Now we're in fourth gear. Now we're really getting the utilization out of the tool that we're paying for, right? Like this happens in all companies I worked at and consulted for, right? Where they buy a tool and they're only driving it you know, they're only leveraging the tool like 20%, 30%. And so my first approach is, okay, how do we maximize the existing technology that you already have and that you're paying for? So already I'm going in with the mindset of like, okay, how can I save you money? And how can I make you money with your marketing? Right? It, it doesn't matter. B- business, it, it's, it's all the same, right? Companies want to do two things. They want to save money and they want to make more money. So how are you fitting into that equation with your products and services? That's the real question you should be asking yourself. Yeah, that's a great answer. 
and the images and the video creation, man, like don't even get me started there. Like I'm not a videographer and I'm not a graphics person. One thing in my marketing career, I always made sure I had like three key, three or four key team members that I needed, right? Before I went, went into a situation, I'm like, okay, do you have these two or three people? And they're like, no. I was like, all right, we, we got to hire them. Like we got to hire these people. Why? You can't do that? No, because I'm not a graphics designer and I'm not a videographer. Right. Like I, I'm not those two things, you know, like companies, you know, when you're applying for jobs or when you're consulting companies, like they expect the marketing guy to be like this unicorn. Right. Mm -hmm. And those are rare to find, like someone that can program, that can think strategically from a business standpoint, that is a technologist that can do graphics, that can do Canva, that, you know, that can do video like they, they expect this unicorn and, you know, they don't exist. I mean, maybe they do. They're very rare to find, right? But I like to stay in my lane. And so the three key people that I always usually take with me in any job is a graphics designer and web designer, a videographer, and a marketing analyst. Like, those are my, like, core roles that I need supporting me as a CMO. Because those are the most important, right? Because th those covered areas that I lack, right? And and my pro tip for everyone out there listening is really identify your strengths and delegate your weaknesses, right? Identify your strengths and delegate your weaknesses because then you will be successful uh, because somebody will be picking up the slack of areas that you lack. And my CEO Greg Ryder at LaunchCart, he says, if it's not your genius, it's not your job, right? I love that because we all have our lanes that we're supposed to be in, the gifts that we have. And I just coined this new phrase the other day on my show on the Be Real X Talks. It's called omni-gifted, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're omni-gifted, right? Like, Gabriel, you're omni-gifted. You like, you, you know, you probably you play soccer, right? Like, did you play soccer? I used to play. Like, it's okay, been yeah. a while, but used to, okay. yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, you were omni-gifted, right? You, you had soccer, you had, you know, other stuff that you do, other passions, right? And so we're, we're all omni-gifted, in my, in my opinion. And so um, just like for marketing, you need to be omnipresent, right? You need to be omnipresent. You need to be on YouTube. You need to be on X and LinkedIn. And you, you have different context with those uh, connections that you're building. So, um, yeah. Hopefully that answers uh, the question, Gabriel. <laughs> Definitely. And as you were talking about the unicorns, I was thinking how that kind of person that's not only only gifted, but also who's constantly looking for new skills to acquire, I think they already have that entrepreneurial bug. So that's one of the reasons that it might be hard to find them to hire them because they will want to do their own thing. Mm-hmm. Love it. And All right. What about your work on launch card? How's that going? And what are your big goals with launch card? Yeah. So my I've been in uh, the CMO role, chief marketing officer role at launch card for uh, about four months now. And uh, it's been going good. It's been challenging as is any startup. You know, any startup you work at is challenging. My last startup before this one, um, unfortunately, we, we ran out of money and they laid everyone off and the, they closed the doors. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, that was a big wake up call. And that happens, you know, more times than not, because, again, it's really difficult to have all those things line up for a successful company, a successful business. It's challenging. Um, but yeah, it, it's going good. We're an alternative to Shopify, right? So we're taking on mm -hmm. Shopify. <laughs> so we have 50,000 users who have created stores on our platform, a lot free, some paid, uh, but more free than not. And so we're actually in the middle of doing like a bridge wow. fundraising round to our series a, uh, which, so we're looking to raise like about a million dollars right now. And, um, in bridge funding before we raise our series a which will be like a 20 million raise and uh the things that we have going for us is a lot of people are getting canceled from shopify so we're that america uh 
platform, e-commerce platform, that's an alternative that we won't cancel you as long as you're not selling anything illegal, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help you sell your products, and so, you know, right? So, and we specialize in print on demand, right? So we have direct integration with Printful, right? So, so companies looking to get into the drop shipping space, you know, create shirts, hats, hoodies, stuff like that. Um, it's definitely a good uh, solution for them. And so, yeah, like we're just continuing to push along, you know, waiting to get our funding and um, keeping customers happy. And really the, the, the day to day for me is really three things, people, process and systems, right? People, process systems, those three things are critical. Just continuing to do that work daily. And uh, I've been like the top seller uh, where I'm selling Launch 360, which is our uh, our core products, which is our e-commerce platform, our CRM system, and our uh, launch ads platform. So it allows people to run advertising as well. So to anyone listening, you should definitely invest in LaunchCart because we have our man Justin Results French over there taking the reins. And yeah, it seems like an amazing platform and an amazing service to use. Yeah, thank you, Gabriel. And we're doing weekly live streams, so come come check us out. Follow me on X. If you're not, you'll see our live streams pop up there. But we're doing weekly training on our launch ads tool and our e-commerce platform and featuring stores um, of successful store owners and how they... And look, e-commerce, print-on-demand, it's like another revenue stream for you, right? Is it going to make you a millionaire? Probably not. But I, I hope it does. But in actuality, it's like a nice additional revenue stream. Like as Gabriel's building his YouTube following, right? As a creator, he can have a launch cart store where he can sell some products or some some swag for you to support the journey. Mm -hmm. So that that's what that looks like. So awesome. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Gabriel. Any any last minute questions before I got to run here? Yeah, man. Actually, there's a question that I usually ask at the tail end. Justin, what's your definition of success? Yeah, my definition of success is being able to spend quality family time without having to clock in or clock out, not having to look at my bank account and worry about any expenses. Like if my daughter wants a toy, like I just get it for her, right? I don't have to check my bank account to see if that's possible. Uh, my definition of, of success is being able to travel with my family wherever we want to go. At, that, at at a quick whim uh, and not have to consult any boss. Uh, my definition of success is being healthy, having healthy relationships, having uh, a healthy relationship with my faith and, and God. And yeah, like that's that's my definition of success. And, and you know, having some nice things wouldn't hurt as well. Um, but yeah, those are those are my go-tos for sure. Yeah, that's a beautiful definition, man. And do you have any last things you'd like to add? Yeah, just the last thing I'll add here is, Gabriel, thank you so much for, you know, allowing me to come and, and speak to to your uh, your audience here, your community, and it's been great. And I've never really <laughs> gotten to do an interview in the last, you know, few years, so this has definitely been a, a blessing for me and, and a, a gift, so thank you. And um, I'll just say... You know, if you guys are interested in learning more about me, uh, you know, check out justinrfrench.com. It's my personal brand site that I finally put together that I put on hold for like 10 years. I finally got that done. Um, I, I host spaces on X, video spaces on uh, my, it's called Be Real X Talks in the Model X Tesla in San Diego. So we drive around, we go to lunch, we break bread, and I interview you on the show. And um, if you'd like to be a guest or a sponsor, you know, definitely let me know. But um, I have high aspirations that one day I'll probably get Elon Musk in there as one of my guests and we'll be riding around San Diego and I'll be interviewing him. So, <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. So, Elon, if you're watching, please go on a ride on the Model X with Justin. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We had the honor of receiving Justin Results French. Go follow him. Thank you so much for coming, Justin. Yeah, thanks, Gabriel. Looking forward to uh, connecting more, man. Yeah, love what you're doing. Thank you again. Yeah, man.